Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Oxer from Oxer Klein, and I am here with Dylan Horowitz and Hank Ehrenfrey to talk about their uh, two person show on OxerKlein.com called The Recent Past. Hey guys. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Uh, so this show is a collection of uh, paintings that were made, I think, in the past year, or maybe some change by the two of you. Um, so yep, thereabouts. Yep. And uh, so we put those together. Um, they're sort of drawn from your personal experiences, um, personal histories. Um, and interestingly enough, there was a lot of crossover between the two. Um, so let's just like jump into the slideshow here. All right. So the first painting is by Dylan. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Sure. Um, so I made this painting during the summer of 2020. Um, and it's, you know, a larger scale painting um, with the sort of point of view perspective, the figure in the foreground being slightly larger than life. Um, I wanted to kind of make a painting that um, you know, initially read as, you know, being so somewhat beautiful and dramatic, but then um, really becoming disturbing upon further viewing of the painting, um, with there being something, you know, embedded within it. Um, I wanted the, the bike and the figure to feel weightless or maybe uneven or awkward. Um, and for the cop car in the distance, however small, um, to feel more weighted and grounded in the painting. Um, and perched above the figure. Um, and yeah, I wanted to, you know, just kind of create the sense of pervasiveness with um, the cop car being embedded in the painting. Um, you know, the sense that they might be everywhere or that you can't escape systems that are perpetuated by, um, you know, the system of the police. And so, you know, I wanted there to be the sense of being crept upon or even kind of stalked upon in the painting. Um, you know, bike rides for me were a really important form of escape um, during, you know, all of 2020. And in general, I've always loved, you know, riding my bike. Um, and, you know, I made this painting after I was just on a bike ride sometime during like June, July. Um, and yeah, it was just honestly like a, a moment where I felt like I was able to kind of escape for a bit. And then it was very striking to come around this corner and for there to be this sunset um, and to be really struck by it. And then to kind of notice that there was just this cop parked in the middle of the grass, at the top of the hill. So just really was trying to recreate that sense of, um, you know, sort of shock um, or surprise through, um, through the sense of color initially and then you know, the image itself. Mm -hmm. Especially after the summer where, you know, there are the Black Lives Matter protest and we were in lockdown for a while, like literally couldn't leave the house, you know, after a certain time. So I think we experienced a sort of police state in a new way. Um, and so I think that's a large reason why we chose this painting is that I feel like even though it's about your personal experience, it's something that we can all sort of grasp onto and relate to right now. Certainly, yeah, and definitely, you know, I've been attending protests throughout the summer and obviously, you know, I was thinking a lot of, about it, um, about everything going on. And so, you know, I definitely felt like, you know, this related to that in some way as well, of course. Great. Let's hop on. This is a painting by Hank that is a collage that he made that uh, then he made a painting of. Um, it's expansive in its own way. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about this, Hank? Yeah, so I made a lot of collages. I guess this one I made back in the summer 2018. And I made them just because at the time I was working a job on campus during my MFA during the summer and 
studio to make work and I didn't have anything there. So I just like grabbed a bunch of free books and like glue and tape and stuff. Um, and uh, was making these collages just as a way to sort of like keep busy in downtime. And uh, Greg Drassler, who's a painting professor at Pratt, walked a and was telling me how he really liked the collages and that they would actually make really great paintings. And at the time, I remember thinking like, oh, that's such a dumb idea. I would never do that. That's so mm -hmm. stupid. Um, why would I paint these collages? They're just, they're ridiculous. I don't know. Um, and I think in making the collages, I was mostly interested in um, like just reworking and uh, sort of parsing together these uh, uh, strange interior spaces. Most of the imagery, at least from those 2018 collages came from a book about a, on a palace in Germany that was modeled after Versailles. Um, but everything about really off. Um, there was like too much gold involved in the like um, accenting of this palace. It had like way too many oriental rooms. Um, and so the collages were, I don't know, just sort of fiddling with that, like already really screwed up architecture um, and like really bizarre, sort of ugly reimagining of um, like this truly iconic piece of architecture um, and like Western art history. Um, and then I think over the course of the past year being sort of having my studio is one of the only other places that I could really go. Um, I wanted to find a way to, I guess, just represent um, the actual act and feeling of observation. Um, and so initially that exercise took the form of painting the photos that I was working from, but not so much painting the content of the photo, but like the itself and how it appears, how I look at it to paint at it. So it's pinned to the studio wall. Um, and then just wanted to continue to find ways to um, expand that looking and explain it better, I think without um, the content of like family photography, because um, that's the photos that I was primarily working from, um, without that content in the way of um, that sort of observation or like trying to make a painting that just shows looking or observation. Um, yeah, I so think another thing that's yeah. interesting that having been in your studio and sort of seen these on the wall is that the marks around the painting in the studio wall or like the size sort of written in there are actually on the wall, which I thought was sort of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. That like your presence is still very there in your space and your experience with this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny how I've, like over the course of, of making these, I've become so much more aware of um, like all the little strange like divots and like paint smudges on the wall and just how many holes I've put in the wall. Um, yeah, and I think it's just been like an interesting challenge trying to paint, I don't know, I don't wanna say garbage, but that's sometimes the way that like the marks on the wall feel, they feel like this like useless sort of excess, but I, I see it. And so it should be there, I guess, but. Totally. Yeah. All right, let's go to this one, which uh, this is sort of interesting. We're gonna start with Hanks, but Dylan also has a painting of churches, which I thought was an interesting sort of subject matter I didn't expect to pop up uh, in both of your works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you wanna tell us a little bit about this, Hank. Yeah, so this is, um, the what used to be 
the Confederate Chapel in Richmond, Virginia. I guess it's still technically the Confederate Chapel, but um, I don't know. Can't remember if it's whatever organization like keeps that heritage going. No longer has any sort of say over what happens to this building. The building, I believe, is completely under the um, purview now of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Um, but uh, I used to live in Virginia. I lived in Charlottesville, um, which isn't too far from Richmond, so I became really familiar with. Um, and uh, was always really struck by this building. It didn't really occur to me exactly what it was until I actually sat down to make the painting and then my boyfriend looked at it and went, oh, that's the Confederate Chapel. Um, and then was like fascinated as to what in the world, or I guess it makes sense that it would still be there in Richmond, Virginia. Um, but yeah, I guess like the timing of choosing to paint this photo, which I've, um, you know, I took the photo day after Christmas in 2019 um, at 12, 17 PM. But um, yeah, I think at the time I was just like struck by the way the light hit this building um, and that it's just something that is familiar to me. Yeah, the timing is interesting and I liked that you decided to sort of paint it before you knew what it was, but then mm -hmm. I agree with that, you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on to another church by Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, this painting depicts, you know, someone smoking in a park. It's Gorlitzer Park in Berlin. And um, it happens to be a park that I spent a lot of time in. Um, I spent a year living in Berlin in high school, and it was my first experience living in a city. Um, and this was the closest park to my host family. And, um, this is based off of a sketch that I made while I was there um, just a few summers ago. And, um, but yeah, it was really my first idea of sort of what um, a park could be in terms of public space and just within a city. Um, having grown up in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and just not really ever having a place like that where people were, felt like people were able to gather in a certain way um, and obviously, you know, it being, you know, drinking laws being different there, you know, just the ability for people, um, yeah, really to party and to gather in different ways that weren't possible. And as a teenager, that was very exciting for me. And so I think, um, you know, I painted this before lockdown, but um, in general, in the past year, um, you know, I've been drawing a lot more. Um, and that's become a lot more important for my practice. It's something that I've, I feel like I've wanted to spend more time focusing on and just, you know, during lockdown, not having um, access to my studio at points, um, you know, it's just obviously the easiest way to keep um, working. And um, initially I was drawing from my rooftop um, in Brooklyn. Um, and then as soon as it was kind of nice enough to be outside in parks, I was just sitting in parks and drawing um, most of you know the spring and the summer and in the fall. Um, and so I kind of see this painting in relationship to a lot of sort of the work that I'm currently making um, and thinking about from you know the past year and um, where you know a lot of a lot of the drawings that I was making last spring and summer started finding their ways you know into, into paintings. Um, but one of the things that you know for me, that's also really interesting about the park um, and, and about, the, you know, just thinking about um, sort of the perspective of the person casually smoking against this background. Um, both the church and the building to the right of it, um, the church, it's called Emmaus uh, Church and it's in um, the Kreuzberg neighborhood and um, it's right next to Gorlitzer Bahnhof and it's uh, former 
uh, train station that um, you know was destroyed throughout the world wars, and the church itself was also um, partially destroyed and has since been restored. Um, but just sort of the combination of you know just the sort of leisure and that kind of space set against that kind of history, mm -hmm. um, and sort of the sense of someone. Um, smoking and having this moment of escape um, while still being confronted by history directly uh, in front of them. So kind of similar to the, the cop painting where there's sort of this like attempt to escape but not being forced to kind of confront um, history or you know the world around oneself. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you both sort of are painting these historical elements in a sort of personal way like your own experience or interaction with them all right let's move on to another painting here by dylan so camp scene yeah yeah so um this painting uh i mean you know i think in the fall um working from some of the drawings that i was just describing to you but um you know was in Brooklyn throughout all of lockdown, but ran in a car a few times over the summer and went camping um, a few different places, um, including the woods campgrounds in Pennsylvania, it's in the Poconos. Um, and it's an LGBTQ campground. Um, and it's also a nudist campground. And, um, you know, definitely, you know, in, in all of my thinking about parks, just really thought of them as these again, places that escaped in some way and thinking of this sort of utopic uh, kind of hidden oasis, you know, in the woods, um, totally surrounded by, you know, um, you know, right outside of the campgrounds, you know, just surrounded by like Trump flags and Trump country. And so it's really this really interesting place, really surprising to even, you know, find out that it existed. Um, but yeah, so in this painting, there isn't as much of a sense of the viewer being confronted with something else. I wanted to create a sense of like transporting the viewer into another into another place or a space that's, you know, kind of seemingly away from the realities of the world and the sort of um, with this sort of ascending figure um, in the woods. Yeah, and it's interesting, again, it's these sort of moments that we had of escapism, sort of, that we could get over the past year or so. Um, playing out, and again, like how you mentioned the area, like this is sort of like this utopia, but around it is this sort of like Trump country. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I wanted to be some humor in it too. I mean, I think the cropping of the painting and just the sort of focus on, you know, just the ass. Um, you know, I think, I mean, I, I think nudism is great. I think, you know, the idea of being in a place and being able to experience things in that way, um, you know, I think there's value to that for sure. But there's also something that I think is like, I don't like nerdy is the right word, but, or like, I don't know what it is, but there's definitely just something kind of goofy and funny about it too. And so I definitely, you know, even as I'm celebrating that, wanted there to be some humor in the image as well. Definitely. All right, and then this is a painting by Hank, July 19th, 2020, 4.34 p.m. Yeah, so this is a self-portrait. I don't think I really made a like proper self-portrait before this since maybe high school. I think maybe in high school I did a bunch of self-portraits because I think that's just what you did in high school. But um, I think especially being in lockdown, I began to think, I guess you just, you spend so much time with yourself, I began to start thinking about self-portraiture. Um, again uh and but the problem that i always encounter is um how i want myself represented and then the question of how i go about representing 
myself, there's just a lot of uncertainty around that, especially when I approach a lot of my work from this point of view of um, that, like, ideally, I aspire to a kind of self erasure in painting, um, where like, I ultimately want to try and remove myself from from the painting like I want it informed as minimally as possible with um, anything too specific I guess like I'd rather have which is interesting though because you yeah. both paint from a kind of point of view perspective in a way mm -hmm. or even if yeah. it's a snapshot or something you take it's definitely from your viewpoint at least yeah yeah and i think what someone pointed out to me once is like the way that the um that like the i don't want to say the camera because in the end it's really just like the viewer the person looking at at the painting um where your eye level is is always sort of off like there's always a strange question of um where you are placed in the room in relation to it like you're there's always a feeling of being like too far down or too high up or something um which i find to be interesting and um disorienting and i think ultimately um when it works brings a viewer back to thinking about um their relation to what they're looking at as opposed to the thing that they're so thinking about that and then trying to fold in self-portraiture into that was uh, like a tricky problem that i wanted to to try and solve for myself at least once over the course of the summer um, so and the paintings in the background are also depictions of the paintings you had previously made, right? Yeah, yeah. So in a not so far away previous painting life, I was making abstraction. And so most of those abstract paintings um, from all of that work are, are gone or painted over or sold or destroyed or some combination. <laughs> um, but there are a few that I've kept just because they were the the best of the bunch, and so those are above my bed, and so those are those paintings, and they all have that. Looking at them now, I'm realizing that they really all do have like this bottom third of pale pink, which um, I don't know. That's just occurring to me right now that they all look like that. I look at those paintings multiple times a day because I live here. But um, yeah, yeah. There's like something. There also there's something like funny that happens sort of automatically with the perspective of the room in this painting, and like the scale of those paintings in relation to um, my figure to be um, and the chair that you can almost see in the corner of the room and then that other painting um on that far end of the wall um yeah there's something about the way that the room gets squashed and expanded in in different ways that um ultimately felt right with my figure there so okay and we talked about parks and public space a few times, and this is, um, I believe, a park, right, Hank? Uh, this is actually in my, what was my grandmother's backyard in San Diego. Uh, so it's my dad and his mother, my grandma Aggie. Um, and uh, they had... There are people in my life who will never forgive me, but it was, I want to say they were orange trees. I know there was an avocado tree there for a while. When this photo was taken, the avocado tree might have still been there. Um, yeah, 
there's some sort of citrus, I don't know, Southern California. Um, but this was in, in um, her, her backyard. Um, and I guess sort of like working backwards from that collage painting at the beginning, uh, this was a family photograph that I had. I like everyone, I have a gazillion of, of these and they all uh, are very special and also like all totally the same in a, in a funny way. Um, and I guess just my initial entry into back into figuration was trying to um, represent the people in these photographs um, and specifically represent my grandmother and her perspective and the people around her um, and then the things that were important to her or um, always sort of present in her life. Um, and uh, ultimately, I think my takeaway from like this painting and a number of others was that at least for me, the important part as a painter of looking at those photos is not so much the content of the photographs, but just that actual looking at the photographs, um, how the trying to find a way to depict the way that the image feels, um, which like in the case of this, the like the age of the photograph um, affects the, the color in a certain way. Um, the light feels a specific way. Um, not to like be a snob, but I think Southern Californian light and sunshine there is fairly specific um, in my experience at least. Um, and I don't know, my grandmother had a lot of love for my father and uh, so yeah. And she was also just like an incredibly like beautiful, glamorous woman. Um, so that's just another thing to to represent here, I think. Good luck, mate. And then another park scene, we talked about this a bit, but Dylan, if you wanna tell us about this one. Sure. Um, yeah, so this was just you know, based off another drawing of mine from this past summer um, in Prospect Park. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much I can really foreground it, but I mean, it was really just me kind of continuing to work with this motif of, you know, the park um, and thinking about public space. And then, you know, in this image specifically, you know, I was interested in the, couple, you know, exchanging the massage in the park and sort of um, just the kind of public exchange of affection and care in that way. And already thinking of the park as this space that everyone was sort of um, coming to, to, you know, relax and to, you know, for a variety of reasons, but, you know, I think all relating to some sense of, you know, seeking relief in some way. Um, and so I think this moment with uh, this couple, to me, felt like it really um, highlighted that, you know, um, for me. So, um, and you know, the, the light in the painting, you know, is, is fairly dramatic as well. And, you know, I just kind of wanted that, the sense of light to kind of um, just give a sense of depth and perspective in the painting and to kind of, create a sense of like crowding in the painting in terms of, you know, the figures in the foreground and you know, everyone receding, uh, you know, into the background. And so I think, uh, you know, and then, you know, the sort of uh, monochromatic palette um, sort of heightening the sort of uh, kind of dream-like, fantasy-like aspect of it. Um, so again, highlighting that sort of sense of escapism. 
mm. I think, um, that people are seeking in this space. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I spent more time in Prospect Park this year than I probably have in the decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The only place to go, kind of. Definitely. Yeah, no, I definitely spent a lot of time there um, throughout yeah, all of last year. And even into the winter, I think we had like a Christmas party, like in two feet of snow in the park. But it wasn't just us, like it was crazy. It was mm -hmm. full of people. Um, I walked through just last weekend and there were still people like barbecuing. Yeah. Which, which hey. And people had like fires going and apparently <laughs> that's allowed now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, people have definitely, I mean, even through into the cold weather, people are toughing it out and just making use of space, you know, as they can, which I think is really interesting. Um, you know, it's completely different, but just even all the outdoor dining, like sort of structures that are being set up that feel so temporary, but also, you know, in some cases they feel really, you know, permanent, but just sort of, um, just seeing the ways in which people have really tried to make use of, you know, the outdoor space that we have in the city in a variety of ways. Um, yeah. Wondering like who's documenting that? It's a good question. I'll have to start taking pictures. <laughs> Well, that was just a selection of some of the work that you guys have in the show, but the full show is on oxtraclient.com. And thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thanks.